I joined Sir Winston Churchill at Southampton at the beginning of cruise 109, which turned out to be the longest and most adventurous pub crawl in which I had ever taken part, and certainly the most memorable fortnight of my life so far. Monday the 23rd of October. 06.30, all hands out of bed. After our breakfast of cornflakes, fried egg and bacon, and a mug of tea, we started on our training schedule. The first morning of the cruise was spent learning the ropes. The captain gave instruction to trainees on helmsman's drill on the bridge. Trainees were shown how to set up and let off the six runner backstay levers, and each trainee was sent up the rigging to the crow's nest before the voyage started. on heaving up sails took place, after which we were shown how to stow and tie the sails. We were shown what each halyard and sheet in that confusing maze of ropes was for, and were told little sayings like Pete the Port to help us remember. <laughs> At 1300 hours, we went below to the half deck for lunch. Vegetable soup, followed by roast pork and a mug of coffee. <laughs> by the time the last of the food stores came aboard, we knew roughly what to do when we set sail and I mean roughly. Our eyes lit up as the chef's assistant received the Coca-Cola supplies. HM Customs gave us a visit shortly before we left Southampton and were shown to the chart room by Captain Collis, where I am sure they were suitably entertained with something a bit stronger with a view to the odd bottle being allowed in the officer's mess before the bond sale was broken again. I was to be the first helmsman, and as the gang sank and screamed ashore, I nervously took my place on the bridge to await orders from Captain Collins. We sailed down the river towards the Solon, amidst all the muddle and confusion. Our sails were hoisted for the first time by trainees who didn't know the difference between a halyard and a sheet. It was annoyed watch me that scolded on their watches with shouts of two six heave and about. Boys, who had not yet found their sea legs, stumbled about the deck, and in the confusion I could see six boys heaving on a rope where three would have been quite enough. Others stood around, wondering what they should be doing, whilst an irritated chief officer stood, glancing up at the yards, wondering if it was too soon to send some of this incompetent-looking rabble aloft to prepare the square topsail and course. Captain Collis strolled from side to side of the bridge, shouting out orders, and then swearing under his breath as they were incorrectly carried out. Slowly but surely, sails were finding their way up the masts and stays. At last, we were well and truly underway. Meanwhile, I was having a bit of fun at the helm. Starboard five! Starboard five, sir. You act a second, so I turn the ship's wheel one turn to the right. Five of the starboard wheel on, sir. Thank you. You know, it's not too bad being on the helm up there on the bridge. You just turn the wheel as you're told, and meanwhile you get out of all the hard work that's going on around you. Steer 180. 180, sir. I don't like the way that officer is looking at me. I'm sure he's just waiting to catch me doing something wrong. The infuriating thing is he always glances just when something has gone wrong, and never when all is well. Steering 180, sir. Thank you. I didn't 
time this all the evening and sweating in a broke, because there were still a few sails to hoist. So we heaved the fast this evening, we came up, we made up, and we coiled up, and started on the next sail. And the officers and watch leaders were happy that everything was shipshape.
took in the log, and the wind tattered ensign was exchanged for a smart one. A smart clean house flag was broken out, and the Albany courtesy flag, and we entered the harbour as a smart showpiece I felt proud to be a part of. Chef decided this was the ideal time for a quick blow up, whilst Bosun set to work on the windlass, and the anchor slid to the bottom of the harbour. Thank you. 